Halo Sobat Kickoff Indonesia, kembali lagi kita di acara Bincang Taktik Kickoff Vlog. Kali ini kita kedatangan tamu istimewa, bukan satu tamu, tapi ada dua tamu. Dia datang dari negara tetangga kita, Australia. Yaitu yang pertama adalah Mike Cooper. Mike Cooper adalah saat ini dia menjadi kepala di Central Coast Central Coast Mariners di sebuah klub di Australia. Kemudian dia juga adalah asisten pelatih di tim nasional U16 Australia. Dan dia juga adalah seorang instruktur di FFA. Kemudian dia juga akan didampingi oleh Nick Montgomery. Dia adalah pelatih di tim akademi dari Central Coast Mariners. Dan dia juga kita tahu adalah mantan kapten dari tim Sheffield United yang sangat terkenal. Dia memiliki pengalaman bermain lama di Premier League Inggris, dan ini kita senang sekali pada malam hari ini kita bisa belajar banyak dari dua tamu ini. How are you, Coach? Good, thank you. How are you? Very good. How's everything there in Australia? Yeah, we're good. We're um, slowly opening up the country. Um, hopefully we get football back soon. Okay. I, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that because we all already all miss the pitch. How about you, Nick? Everything's yeah. good. Yeah, good. Thank you. Missing the missing being out on the grass, coaching the the players. But like you said, the world is on standstill at the minute. But hopefully, football will resume soon, and we can all get back to the game we love. Okay, nice to hear that from you, Nick. Yeah, sobat Kikov Indonesia, kita akan uh, belajar satu topik yang sangat menarik uh, pada malam hari ini, yaitu bagaimana kita mendokumentasikan proses belajar dari seorang pemain sepak bola individu di dalam satu proses pembinaan sepak bola usia muda. Kita tahu selama ini banyak sekali kita melakukan pembinaan usia muda terhadap pemain-pemain, tetapi kita juga sering melupakan pengembangan individu, dan kita juga sering kali kurang teliti di dalam melakukan dokumentasi terhadap pengembangan individu tersebut. Malam hari ini kita akan belajar dari dua expert, yang akan menjelaskan bagaimana si pemain sepak bola usia muda secara individu mereka belajar dan bagaimana mendokumentasikan proses itu dan bagaimana menggunakan dokumentasi dari proses belajar individu itu untuk menjadi suatu referensi pengembangan rencana ke depannya. Oke, okay. so Mike, we're gonna start with the my first questions regarding on the documenting uh, learning in the individual development within the youth development process but first of all my question is what is the definitions of learnings actually so learning is basically obviously acquiring knowledge and skill in order then to be able to perform it so in in our context that means learning the skills of football um, and then getting it to a point where you can perform to a higher level. And then you obviously learn more skills, experience new things, and then you perform to a higher level. Um, and hopefully the, the learning will match the potential and, and you reach the level that you're capable of doing so. Okay, but uh, when, when you are uh, football players and you are young, uh, of course there, there will be a lot of way to learn. Uh, can you explain uh, how the young players actually learn in their well, think, activity? Yeah, sure. I think I think the first thing is that you have a deep love of the game. Um, you know, you're not going to learn anything in life if you don't really love mm -hmm. what you're learning. So that real intrinsic motivation um, to play the game. And then you're, you're going to learn from experiences or you're going to learn from specific feedback and then, um, you know a coach can be more explicit with you about mm -hmm. something specific but mm -hmm. then you may also just learn from playing the game so it's the combination of both throughout the journey so are you saying that the, the learning process itself is not always formally like the coach giving some inputs to the players but also can the players do it by themselves 100 percent. yeah the the evidence is around the world of of players they get their extra time working out on their own um, and that's unstructured 
Um, I think mm -hmm. as, as the world develops, we, we're providing more structure, mm -hmm. um, which is good and bad, which kind of links into the topic today. Um, mm -hmm. Are we documenting what we're doing? Are we aware of how to set up environments so it's less structured, but they're mm -hmm. still learning in place? Um, mm -hmm. And everything that we do, is it, is it inspiring individuals to go and train on their own um, and work on, in their own time on their strengths and their weaknesses? Okay. Is there anything you want to add, uh, Nick, uh, regarding your uh, experience in the academy? Yeah, look, I mean, Mike said there, somebody that's had a 20-year playing career. You know, I look back on my childhood and oh, it's a different generation. Like Mike mm -hmm. said then, you know, going out in the street, playing street football, um, you know, learning from mistakes, learning from watching. You know, I used to watch every game of football, Premier League, Italian, Italian football, you know, any football that's on. And I think the generation now is they don't, you know, there's too many, too many things out there for them to watch. So unless they're... You know, like Mike said, motivated to improve themselves and they're going to watch the best players in the world. They're going to practice in isolation. You know, again, learn from mistakes, learn from experiences and, and feels and emotions and stuff. I think, like I say, as a young player, all these things help to, to build you up to a process where Mike says then the coaching comes in and you know, then can, can the coach improve as a player? You know? mm -hmm. Does a coach see strengths in you and, and weaknesses that, that, that you need to work on? So... There's a whole host of things, but at the end of the day, for me, unless the, the young player has the motivation himself to improve, then you know a lot of it's a lot of it's hard. But you know, like Mike said, and talking about the documenting and stuff, as as a coach in academies, you know, kids are growing at different rates. You know, you have some kids that develop quicker than others. You know, and it's about how do you monitor that? You know, how do you see a player that's possibly at a high level at a young age? And, and a player not as high level, but as the as the years and seasons go on, maybe the player at the low level is developing quicker and overtakes the player that everybody thought was a better player. So, again, there's a lot of different ways of documenting and being able to see that because, you know, football is football. You know, coaches leave, managers leave. You know, but if, if clubs can have the data on the players that, that are at their club, then possibly a new coach come in and straight away he's got mm -hmm. a... a you know, it, it's documented. It's not my opinion or Mike's opinion or your opinion. It's document documentation of uh, mm -hmm. match minutes they've played, injuries they've had, you know, um, development in terms of from from what level have they, you know, uh, what level have they improved on over the last couple of seasons. So again, there's there's lots of good ways of, of collecting data and, and documenting things properly. Okay, you have mentioned uh, the importance of the documenting the, the learning uh, process. So we already, of course, understand that uh, data is very important as a reference to, to, to develop the program, to, to evaluate and, and to monitor the, the progress of the players. But my question is, first, how do you, how do you measure the learning? And of course... Uh, when you already said that the, the learning process itself, it can be structured, it can be unstructured, it can be formal, informal, then how are you going to documenting that process? Um, I'll share my screen in a minute and show you um, okay. a bit of a framework and then some examples. But I think, I think the key thing that, um, you know, as adults working with young children, we have a responsibility and duty of care to show them what we've done um, so I think, I think that that's also important to, to understand. So I'll just show my screen. Sorry, get to the start. Okay. All right, are you with me? Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Open so development. Yes. Yeah. So this is the first few bits is just kind of like how a framework could work. So mm -hmm. if you, if you follow the blue boxes, you kind of need to need to define what your desirable outcomes are. Mm -hmm. Think of the end in mind. What type of player do we want to develop? What type mm -hmm. of person are we trying to develop? And you might even break that down in positions. Then what are the learning intentions? And then what are your success criteria? So what are you looking for? And then that will give you your coaching points. Um, and then beneath that is your learning environment that you create. Um, and as a coach, you observe, reflect, monitor. Um, so here's an example. So mm -hmm. this is a model where the, the players in the middle, because they're the most important. Um, mm -hmm. And then 
identified some key areas for the curriculum. So the person in the top left, the red corner, yes. um, what do we want to develop in the person? So social skills um, could be in there, for example. Technical, tactical, so the X's and O's of the game. Mm -hmm. So that's from core skills to attacking, defending, transition, mm -hmm. position specific. Um, and then you've got the link to academics and the mind and body. So, you know, how do we develop somebody um, to be more resilient, for example? Or mm -hmm. how do we develop somebody physically to be able to play at the top speed, at mm -hmm. the top level? Um, so they're the main corners. And then within each corner, can you identify some key things to get the next level of detail out? Mm -hmm. Um, so it starts to get complex because once you've identified your key things, what are you what are you trying to develop in each one? So as a as a club or as a um, football school, you will need to then develop how do you break it down into a more structured curriculum. Mm -hmm. So here you can see there's some headings under mind and body. Um, there's some headings under the athlete and there's some headings under the tenor tactical and that's up to you to decide mm -hmm. But one, Once you have these headings you can then go into right. What's the stages of development? So Is there a foundation stage? Um, and if so within that foundation stage Then what do I teach? in terms of core skills or in terms of physical literacy and then as the stage goes through academy to performance then the criteria will change. So are you saying that in this uh, in these uh, tables is uh, regarding on the on the age uh, group separations? Yeah, so mm -hmm. the one on the screen at the moment will the foundation phase will be your younger age group so your your 8 to 12 mm -hmm. um, academy 12 to 15 16 and then performance 16 and above. Okay. Um, and and the age is I say it's approximately because there's, there's yeah, stage okay. versus age. Um, like Nick said earlier, somebody might physically develop quicker than somebody else. Um, and, and the better player might be hiding behind him. So then once you have the, um, you know, you mentioned earlier about KPIs, what are the KPIs? Mm -hmm. So then basically what we're producing is a learning process. So you've got the, ov the overall curriculum, the learning intentions, the coaching points, and that will give you your environment and common language. Mm -hmm. And then it's the case of identifying what's the success criteria for each stage. Um, okay. So you, you're building a framework to teach from. Okay. So then once you have a framework to teach from, um, you can then come up with things like this, which is, um, some assessment criteria, and this isn't specific to anything, I'm just showing you what um, assessment criteria can look like. Mm -hmm. But this could be, you know, execution of a short pass, and then you could have some um, assessment criteria around that. Okay. Um, you could have execution of a short pass in a game, you can, you can have assessment criteria around that. So the documentation of reporting starts to become quite specific. Mm -hmm. And what what do you mean with the with all the provisions consolidating, developing, and beginning? It's the so, it's the yeah. level or yeah. So say within within the foundation phase, mm -hmm. core skill being short passing. Mm -hmm. Are they a beginner? So then you would describe what does that look like? Are they developing? Are they consolidating that skill, or are they highly proficient in that skill? Mm -hmm. And then that would change for the next stage of development as you go through the stages. So there'll be many of these rubrics for each one of those elements mm -hmm. for each stage of development. So this is like the 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 the, the score for 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 the easy way to to yes. explain. Yes. Yeah, so the end the end goal would be that the coach would have some specific criteria to observe a player. And give them some scores based on some agreed outcomes which mm -hmm. will once you once you put the scores into a um, data sheet you can get a picture like this 
Mm -hmm. So you can start to see where somebody is more proficient in one area than another. Mm -hmm. And then if you do this over a period of time, you can start to see development or you can start to see a certain area that's slowing down maybe. Mm -hmm. So if you, now we're talking about reporting, you can't report if you don't know what you're going to teach, yes. which is the framework. Um, and then once you bring in the framework to life with, if you look at the bottom, we've got live feedback. So that that's within session. Mm -hmm. um, that might be immediate. That might be at the end of the session. Um, mm -hmm. And then you've got post feedback. So that might be post game review. Mm -hmm. um, ongoing reflection, tying it all together. And then reports and action planning, which is, which is based on the image that you can see. So this reporting structure ties it all together. So when you speak to a child, they kind of know what pathway they're working on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, here's an example of um, some data that's collected from a team, team point of view. So obviously when, when you work with a national team, you're still trying to develop individuals, mm -hmm. yes. but you've, you've got to keep um, winning games to stay in competition so individuals yes, get course. experience. Um, so at this level, you get lots of information available. So here's some snapshots of technical information that's available to you after mm -hmm. a game. So it's post game mm -hmm. feedback. Mm -hmm. And then it's, then it's up to us as coaches to work out how this information fits into our team model and our player position profiles. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to us as coaches to, to find the important information and then deliver that to individuals or maybe a group of individuals or the whole team. Mm -hmm. So it's an example of you can have lots of information, but you still got to fit it into your team model. You don't want to get lost with the information. Mm. It's okay. Um, moving on. So here's... Um, the information you can get from a physical report. Mm -hmm. So back to the, the learning framework, that would be on the physical side. In training, how, how do we develop players that can do high-speed meters repeatedly? Mm -hmm. And then a game report can show us how, how well that player did. And then do we need to change training to improve it? So Australia in the last World Cup, kind of it kind of highlighted that we worked harder without the ball and we didn't work as quickly as other teams with the ball. Mm -hmm. So that's so our conclusion, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So our training moving forward, we need to make sure that our passing practices and our and our intensity in training is of a higher tempo. Mm -hmm. So we can replicate that in the game. Um, because obviously in transition moments, that's key. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, of course. So now this is kind of like um, a professional club example. Mm -hmm. So Nick will explain it um, mm -hmm. from here on. Yeah, so look, this is just a quick snapshot of um, you know a report that I did and my assistant who um, is Portuguese, he's worked at Benfica, so he's worked with some top top quality Mm -hmm. Players that are now playing in the, in the Premier League. Obviously, myself, uh, I've worked with the likes of Harry Maguire, Kyle Walker, and then we're young players at, at Sheffield United. But back in them days, we didn't have this data available that we do now. And as Mike said then, and, and you said quite rightly, there is a lot of information out there. Um, but for me as a coach, now it's about documenting uh, data throughout the season. Um, and you know whether you review it halfway through the season or whether you, the end of the season you review it. Um, and there is just a quick snap snapshot of obviously as you can see on the screen off season plans, in season out off season uh, gym programs, um, skin folds, um, obviously injuries. But again, depending on the the, the people that you're working with, the staff, uh, it's quite easy to to give them roles and responsibilities so that each day they, they document certain data and then it all gets put into a spreadsheet. So we made a spreadsheet um, that we documented match minutes, um, obviously uh, training minutes, 
we did have GPS units, so obviously it was good that we could document the GPS data, but it's important that you have the facilities set up um, in order for you, you to delegate people to put that data in so that when myself as a coach wants to have a meeting with a player, for instance, at the end of the season, I would pull each player in and obviously say to them, you know, this is what, where I feel you started the season, I hear your improvements, let's have a look at your data. And then again, you're not just saying it on your opinion. You know, if my opinion of the player is you don't do enough running and then I can show the data in front of him on a document to, to document that, look, you're not doing the, the sufficient amount of running or, you know, an attacking player, you're not doing enough high speed metres. Um, and, you know, for the, the game model, the style of play that, that I play, it mm -hmm. obviously doesn't, you know, he needs to do more. It doesn't fit that because football is football. You have to release players. You know, not every player gets a contract. So, you know, I think the players need to know that at the end of the season, um, you know, uh, you know what, where the strengths are, why, why you made the decisions you have. And I think as, as young players, they, they need that visualisation and that conversation and, and it helps them move on because I think you know players do have disappointments in their career and it's how they react to them so if you can be honest with them and you can show the data to them then you know at mm -hmm. least at least you know some will some will go on and prove you wrong but look this this screen that's on at the minute uh, this is um, this is a, a template from a friend of mine that's developed a developed a platform where there is 150 questions Mm -hmm. which every player, you know, here's just an example of some of the questions. Question 20 there, technical receiving on the floor, outside of the foot, on his left foot, on a scale of one to five, as you see on the left, one being poor, five being excellent. You know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you, at the start of the season, put all this data in, um, and then at the end of the season, you can produce a, a document like, like this, then, again, this is a platform that, is not expensive to use, um, but it's a way of documenting every single player within your squad. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and this is your opinion as a coach. So I think that's the most important thing. Football's about opinions. So if you can give your opinion, honest opinion on the players that you work with every day, day in, day out. And again, you can see their te technical, tactical, physical, mental. The mental one is a massive thing because you get to see that every day. You know, what's their attitude like in training? What's their attitude like to setbacks? Um, you know, do they listen on in training? Do they listen in match days? So, by producing a graph like this, which is just a quick example, it is a little bit more complex. And then putting all the players in the same, the same data for every player at the end of the season, you can pull graphs and you can show them this, which again documents your, you know, your, uh, your evaluation of them. So I think, you know, like I say, there's a lot of stuff out there, and this is quite a simple way of, of allowing the players to, to understand your opinion of them. Okay, uh, Mike and, and Nick, uh, my last question. Uh, you know, in Indonesia, all you have shown is something maybe very new, and all you have shown in the presentation is also seems very sophisticated. But what is your uh, advice to at least start the to documenting, dating uh, some uh, some small things or some some uh, important informations at least to to progress to 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 to, to monitor the the players' uh, development. What is your advice to 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 start? I think for for just the coach, you know, the main thing is to to document your next session. Um, what, what's your learning intention for that session? Mm -hmm. What are your key coaching points? Um, mm -hmm. And then if you can, try, try and document some sort of reflection on how well that session went. Mm -hmm. If you can get into the habit of doing that over a period of time, you develop a, a framework of sessions. Um, so you can look back six weeks ago, I did this. Mm -hmm. um, in the future, therefore, I'm going to try and do this. Um, if you if you don't build that bank, um, you're pretty much guessing what you're doing for the players. Mm. So the first step, you your 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 advice will be like documenting your sessions and uh, documenting your reflections on each sessions, right? It for a coach, yeah. If for a club, 
Mm -hmm. I think for a, club? For, for a club, I think the first step is to is to start with that framework and and start with the end in mind. You know, what what type of player are we trying to develop? What does that player look like? So in the in the striker position, what does that player look like? What skills does he or she need? Um, and then work out what, what you're gonna do in training. Um, so start with the end in mind, I would say. So like making the profiling of each uh, position uh, and, and then try to document uh, the, the process uh, towards that, right? Yeah, and, and, not, and not just the X's and O's, you know, the type of person and this, Nick mentioned the psychology, the mm -hmm. mental side of the game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're highlighting in Indonesia, you need um, players that are resilient. Yes. Um, can can deal with an aggressive nature mm -hmm. um, and maintain calmness, then mm -hmm. how do you develop that? Um, but first step is to highlight what, what you need. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, how about you, the, Nick? What is your opinion regarding on it? Well, like Mike said then, talking about the coaches, I think it's important that you document your sessions and uh, your planning and stuff, which again is, is part of being a coach. But look, Depending on the club you're at, you know, maybe you don't have to have 150 uh, points to on each play. But if you're looking after 10, 20 players, for example, then you can put all their names down in a simple, mm -hmm. simple document in a spreadsheet. And then you can might be 10 questions where you know the question is one to five. What's his attitude like in training? You know, and it's one is very poor, five is excellent. You know, in in the games, you know, in the games performance rate is performance one good five poor you know so again it might only be relevant to to the club you're at but you could create a simple a simple way of of collating a little bit of data on each player so that at the end of the first month you can say okay john you know let's have a look at you in training you know you're averaging a two out of five which is you know poor attitude in training poor low concentration so you need to work on your, your concentration all, all of a sudden the kids there going okay so I didn't realise, but he's watching how I'm training every day, and that's poor. So, you know, if you're a kid and go home to your parent and say, I got two out of five in, in concentration and, and, and training, then the parents are going to say, well, you know, they're watching you, but how you train. So if you want to get a better player, you need to push that up to a four out of five. So just simple ways of documenting that sort of data without getting too complex. You know, you can, that's where you start really getting into the, to the kids and seeing what mentality they've got. And again, depending on what ages they're at, the questions could be changed to be relevant to that. So you don't need loads of staff, loads of data. You know, everyone knows how to use a spreadsheet now. If not, get a pen and a paper and pen and on your session plan, have all your, your squad there. And after the session, just, just quickly mark, you know, what's relative so that you have some data at the end of it to show them. Okay. It's a, so basically start from simple things and move forward, right? Yeah, always. Okay. Mike and uh, Nick, uh, thank you very much for your uh, time and uh, great, great explanations. Uh, we learn a lot. No problem. no problem. Thank you very much for having us. Yes, uh, I wish you all the best for your uh, future career. Thank you and to you. And uh, hello to anyone that's listening that we worked with um, together um, in Indonesia last year. Yes, <laughs> I think uh, all of them uh, miss uh, with you. <laughs> Oke, okay. baik Sobat Kickoff Indonesia, kita malam hari ini telah belajar banyak terkait mendokumentasikan pengembangan individu, bagaimana pengembangan proses belajar itu harus selalu didokumentasi sehingga bisa menjadi informasi dan referensi untuk pembuatan program ke depan. Nantikan terus vlog-vlog Kickoff Indonesia selanjutnya, pantau informasi kepelatihan sepak bola terbaru di kickoffindonesia.com. Dan jangan lupa bahwa permainan sepak bola tidak akan dimulai tanpa kick-off.